Today, we are in a Chinese village in Thailand. We're going to go to a Chinese market, eat Chinese food, speak to some Chinese people, and find out why there's a Chinese village in Thailand. Let's go. So to get to the Chinese town of Doi Mei Salong, first we had to leave Te Tai. We had to drive on this strange mountain highway. Look at it, it splits in two and goes upwards. Anyway, I then stopped to appreciate the view. What have I got this crap in the way for? But soon enough, things started to look a little less Thai and a little more Chinese. Sorry, cup. Don't worry. Okay, cup. Oh, okay, cup. All right, last push into uh, Doi Mei Salong, but it kind of starts early. Seems to me like it's like one long town built along the ridge. Look at this. China now, boys. The next morning. Let's go get some breakfast. So I'm staying opposite. I mean, look, I'm walking down my hotel. Oh, here we are. <laughs> Sorry, cup. Manto. Manto. Song An. I got some steam buns. Time to get some soy milk, and then uh, we got ourselves a little uh, a little breakfast snack. Ni ni lai cup. Ah cha. Cha. Oh. Hot cup. Any Thai lai cup. Okay cup. Come cup. There's a bit of Chinese stuff here. Oh, look at that sweet basil. That looks beautiful stuff. Nice big leaves. Oh. Right, I don't want to interrupt too much, but this stall is making long Chinese donuts. These are very common in Thailand, but you can see by the time, skill and effort that this vendor is putting into each individual one that these are really expertly made. And the long queues of patient people buying giant bags of these and steamed buns and soy milk are further proof of this stall's quality. ไม่เอาหรอไม่เอาหรอ
Mi mantel. Ok, kom ik Good morning. Good morning. Top on way. Top on. Top on. Top on. Top on. Top Okay, 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 Uh, thank you, come cap. She mixed it for me. What's that all about? Huh? She's probably thinking <laughs> oh, this foreigner doesn't know what he's doing, I'll mix it for him. Huh? Little does she know. Little does she know. Uh, she doesn't know what she's dealing with. Anyway, let's dig in. Oh, yeah, tofu's good. There's kind of chunks of, um, it's not lumpy, it's like chunks of salad, salad tofu in there as well. Mm, yeah, that's nice. Decent, uh, very garlicky, lots of uh, fried garlic oil. All right, so before I head off into Doi Mei Salon, I thought I would show you the little room. I slept in. This is a pretty decent sized futon bed and super soft. Nice little wooden room, 200 baht. You can't get cheaper than that, can you? 200 baht? Right, time to leave my nice wooden hotel and uh, hit the road. So uh, yeah, let's do it. Then it was time to drive up to the top of a mountain that looks out over Doi Mei Salong to a Thai temple built by the old king in memory of his late mother. My favourite part, however, was this waving baby and all the Chinese temples by the side of the road on the way down. Just like this one. Check it out. He's more cute than scary. Let's go and learn a little bit more about this town's Chinese history. Good idea. History time. During the Chinese Civil War, the communists under Chairman Mao were fighting to gain control of China from the nationalists, the Kuomintang, led by Chiang Kai-shek. By 1950, the Kuomintang were mostly in the south of China, being squeezed from the north by Mao. Those near the coast fled to Taiwan, but many Kuomintang remained in the mountains of Yunnan, with the communists gaining ground. By 1950, 12,000 Kuomintang soldiers escaped defeat in Yunnan, crossing into Burma and settling in southern Shan State. Finding themselves in the middle of the Golden Triangle just as the opium trade was about to start booming, the Kuomintang got stuck in and started to control the trade in their areas. By 1961, Burma decided that they didn't actually like having a foreign army camped in their mountains and asked them to leave. And so the remaining soldiers of the 93rd Regiment fled into Thailand. The 93rd Regiment was commanded by General Tuan, who led his troops to Doi Mei Salong, and General Lee, who established his headquarters at Tam Nob, which we will visit in upcoming episodes. Thailand was an independent monarchy surrounded by countries with communist insurgencies. Fearing the spread of communism, the Thais decided that having a free communist hating army on their doorstep could actually be pretty useful. And so let the Kuomintang stay and conduct their business so long as they fought any communists in northern Thailand. Because of their sacrifice, the Thai government let them settle in northern Thailand and gave them Thai citizenship. Business turned from opium to tea growing and tourism. If you've ever been in Chinese ancestral shrines, you will see often at the backs of these temples, wooden blocks, like steps. And I think as it kind of, as the steps go up, it's like the older generations going down to the new generations. In here, they've got them also. So these must be all of the troops that were, that lived up here. So the tomb of the general who led the army unit to here 
from China into Myanmar and then here into Thailand is behind me, General General Tuan. His tomb is up there behind me and it is guarded by a rather intense guy in army clothing who is standing attention at all times and will just salute you. Yeah, I'm sure he means well. I'm not sure whether he's a former soldier or an enthusiastic, enthusiastic local. I don't know. In this room, we can see old Chinese signage up next to pictures of the Thai king. The Chinese community of Northern Thailand really appreciate and respect the king because they're aware that he let them stay there and become Thai. Now I'm quite keen to hit the road and get going, but uh, I, need some, I need some grub beforehand. And I thought, when in Rome, so I'm having some Chinese food. So you've got to have it. So I've got some tofu. I was going to get mapo tofu, which is spicy tofu, but I've got something else. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it is. But most importantly, just remember, enjoy your birthday. <laughs> the smell coming off this tofu is Ooh. yeah. Come on, I've got to have a bit. It's uh, like fried in um, Sichuan, Sichuan spices, chili and uh, Sichuan peppercorn, maybe some cumin. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. There's also a market mainly for domestic tourists, selling tea and Chinese preserved fruits and nuts. It didn't do a lot for me, but it's nice enough, I guess. Anyway, it's time for me to leave Doi Mesa Long and head out on the road towards Chiang Mai province. But as you can see, even quite far down the road, there are still Chinese houses and even a Chinese sausage shop drying its sausages in the sun. Bit of a tongue twister. Cheers, gang. See you next time in Taton.